everyone, this is Tammy with Shabby Fabrics. I have the funnest DIY project for you today. This is a folded Christmas tree napkin. A very good friend of mine brought this to me and showed me she had received it as a hostess gift. And I asked her if it'd be all right if I showed you all how to do this, and she said, absolutely. So this is a folded Christmas tree napkin. I'm gonna show you what this looks like. It's just a half circle and you simply fold it together and you have this adorable Christmas tree. Wouldn't this be fun on your table? I think I'm making lots for my table. So let me show you how to do that. To get started, you're gonna go to our, our homepage on shabbyfabrics.com, scroll all the way to the bottom and click on free downloads. There you're gonna see a folded Christmas tree napkin. From that, you're gonna click on download the free pattern. This is what your pattern is gonna look like. Here's your template. You have your fold lines, you have a cut line, and you have a seam line on here, okay? So, to make this napkin, you can make two napkins out of a fat quarter. So you can take two fat quarters and put them together. I just pressed my fabric right sides together. I have a beautiful green and a beautiful red. So I'm gonna put them together like this. I'm gonna place my template on here. And then I'm gonna take a few pins and get this on here. Just to hang, just enough pins just to hold on to my template. I didn't go crazy pinning this. But I am gonna keep my pins away from my cutting line, which is my outside line. I don't wanna put my pin over that. I'm gonna show you how I do this with a rotary cutter. All right, I'm gonna move this guy out of the way so he's in the safe zone away from my cutter. All right, here we go. I'm gonna take my big ruler and I'm going to line this up on my solid line here and cut just like that. And now I'm going to use my rotary cutter and I'm just gonna slowly cut around this circle. This is a gradual enough curve that I feel confident doing this. If you don't feel confident doing this, feel free to use your shears. Your nice fabric shears would work well. Um, I usually use a larger shear when I'm cutting circles like this rather than small scissors. I find it just makes my cut smoother and nicer. Just like that. Ta-da! Done. All right. Now I'm going to remove my pattern and set this aside. I'm going to use this again when we make our folds on it. So it'll give you a guide for folding. We're going to pin this together. Just a few pins is all I need. Now when I do this, so I'm sewing this with my right sides are together. I'm gonna to take my little shabby ruler and a friction pen, and I'm gonna make a mark right here at the top. I want, a mark always reminds me, leave an opening. You know how that goes, right? I don't know how many times I've gone to sew something, not made a mark, I sew the whole thing closed. Great, now I'm seam ripping. So I always make marks so I know where to start and where to end. And I did do a little back tack at the end of these, okay? So instead of you watching me sew on camera, I have done that ahead of time for you. So here's my piece. Here's my little marks with my back tacks. I took my little Kai scissors and I clipped my corners off. This just helps to reduce the bulk in those corners a little bit. This is a fairly gentle curve, but I did go ahead and clip this around like this. I just wanted to make sure that when I open this up, this is gonna be a nice smooth edge. So I do have little clips in here and I'm being careful not to cut my stitches. Okay, all right, ready to go. Let's turn it right side out and see what we've got. So I can't very well get into this point very well. So I'm gonna use my Clover point turner 
I love this point to point turner. Wow, it makes a really sharp point. Do the same on this side, just like this. Beautiful. Turn this. Now I'm gonna use this smooth spatula side. Let's turn that over. And I'm just gonna run this in here. Look how nice that just quickly and easily puts that fabric right where it's supposed to be. I love that. Okay, now we're gonna seam press it and then we're gonna take it to the sewing machine and stitch it with some pretty metallic thread. So I like to roll my seams when I press, just to make sure that I have that seam right where I want it. I'll go ahead and give this a press here. Just like this. Keep going. I'm just kind of working those edges. I'm just getting that seam right where I want that before I press it in there. On around. And the steam is turned on on this. You can steam that as much as you want to. You don't have to worry that you're not to use steam on this. I use steam all the time. I don't know if I got that corner quite poked out like I want it. Let's redo that a little. There we go. Okay. Now when we get up here to the top, the reason I leave an opening on the straight edge is it is a lot easier to fold my edges in on a straight edge than it is on a curve. I have done circles and you fight that curve when you are doing that. So I'm gonna fold the front out of the way. I'm gonna take my back and I'm gonna fold it down a quarter of an inch and I'm gonna give it a press. Okay, so all I've pressed right now is the back. Now I'm gonna come back with my front and it's easy to just fold this where it needs to go. Now I have a guide and I can just line this up just like this and I'm just fussing with my fabric. I'm pulling it in and out a little bit with my fingernail just so I get them all lined up and give it a press. Just like that. Perfect. Okay. Now we need to top stitch that to stitch our opening closed. So what I'm gonna do is I decided to use metallic gold thread, give it a little bling. I love that, I love metallic thread at Christmas. So I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and I wanna talk to you about the thread director because metallic thread can sometimes be a little scary to use. I understand that. I didn't used to like metallic thread either. So I'm using a silky sliver metallic today. This is a thread director, and what this is gonna do, it's gonna guide my thread through my machine. If I attach this spool here, when it comes off, it's twisted and it turns. What the thread director does is it redirects my thread. Let me put this on here correctly. You want it so it's coming up and over, okay? Just like this. I'm gonna attach it here. Now I want this spool to spin freely. I don't want it to catch at all or to, or to grab. So you can loosen this little disc back and forth on here so you make sure it goes freely, all right? And then we just go ahead and thread our machine as normal. And then we're going to stitch this lovely Christmas tree. All right, so here we are at the sewing machine. I am going to start on this corner up here I'm gonna hold my thread out of the way. And I have loosened the tension on this machine a little bit. And I'm gonna sew this with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So I'm just gonna find, a, find somewhere on your machine that you can use as a guide. I am gonna use this right here, where this metal piece and my feed dogs are. That's a really good place to use as a guide. It's about an eighth of an inch. And then my seam is gonna be even all the way along. Let me get that thread back where I want it. There we go. Perfect. All right, here we go. I'm gonna sew slowly. I don't wanna sew really fast. There we go. 
I love this Bernina machine. I have a Schmetz metallic needle in here. I always want to use a metallic needle when I'm sewing with metallic thread. It's going to make your life a lot easier. The thread director feeds that thread so it doesn't get twisted. I've also lengthened my stitch length a little bit. I think I'm at 2.75 and my tension has been lowered to 2.75 as well. Normally I think it runs around five and a quarter. So a little bit less tension. There we go, we're gonna come around the corner and again I'm just lining this up right on that, right on that mark there. Go through, there we go. All right, so now we have top stitched this and we have a beautiful half circle that's top stitched. We have our gold thread here. I use red on the back so that you're not gonna see my stitches there. Now we're gonna take it back to the iron and we are gonna press this and press our folds into it. So now we're gonna use our pattern that comes with your download and these have your fold lines on them. I'm gonna lay this on here like this. I'm gonna lay this on here. All right. And our first fold is over like this. There it is. You can see that fold line. So all I've done is I've laid this on here with my red side facing up. Fold this over for my green. I'm gonna fold it back now to line that up and down. This is so cute. I just love this little thing. What a clever, clever idea. All right, here's our napkin. So now I wanna set that crease in there really well because I don't want him to come out. So I'm going to take my iron on hot and I'm gonna give this a little bit extra steam because I definitely wanna steam that in there. There we go. Nice. Clever. Isn't that cute? And we're done, just like that. So I hope you've enjoyed this DIY project on making a folded Christmas tree napkin. We'll see you again soon.